So yesterday at church here, we had uh, a very special day. Uh, we've had some uh, members of our congregation who've been in practitioner training for the last two years. And before that, they've done oh, however many years of classwork to get to this place. And so as of yesterday, we have seven new practitioners at our church. Yeah. So uh, this is a, a really wonderful and extraordinary accomplishment. And we will have a graduation in a couple of weeks on August 12th, August 5th. 5th, okay, August 5th. We're going to have a little graduation here, and you are most welcome to uh, join us in that. So today I'm going to talk about something, uh, a subject that I like, this idea of demonstration. So Ernest Holmes teaches us in The Science of Mind that a demonstration is the end result of conscious mental work. Right? And so what I mean by that is, well, in his textbook he says, a demonstration brings about greater good. We demonstrate at, our, at the level of our ability to know, our ability to know. The treatment that leads to demonstration is not to make something happen, to but to provide the avenue within ourselves through which things may happen. Spiritual demonstration is a manifestation of reality. So this is a big subject, and people always say, you know, gee, why doesn't God answer my prayer? Oh, I don't understand, does this working, or it's not working. So I'll tell you a little story that um, years ago, I had been at the church for a while, and, uh, and it came to me that we really needed to have a fence around our property, because that would really expand our usable space. Between you and I, up until that point, our yard, our garden, was uh, the depository for everyone in the neighborhood who had an animal. You understand? Yes. Okay. I know you do. It was poopy central, I'm trying to tell you, okay? <laughs> and so it, the, it, we weren't able to use the yard very much, right? So it came to me in, uh, in meditation one day that, you know, we needed to have a fence. And I went to the board and I said, gee, I'd really like to put a fence around the property. And they said, gee, we think that's a great idea. So I investigated and found out that it was going to cost a little over $40,000 to do that. We did not have $40,000 to put up a wrought iron fence all the way around our property. So, knowing how the science of mind works, I asked a few practitioners, uh, Catherine Christie, Susan Davis, and some others, to join with me every Monday at 5 o'clock. And we met every Monday at 5 o'clock, and we prayed, and we meditated for an hour. And we spoke our word about our perfect fence and all the wonderful effects that it would have on us, that we could have events out on the lawn, and we could have barbecues, and the children could play there, and blah, blah, blah. And, awesome. and we did this for two years. And you know what? At the end of two years, we had the money we needed to buy the fence. And so I know you're thinking, well, you could have just waited two years. You didn't have to meet every Monday. But I believe that what was happening is that every Monday we were creating the consciousness. We were becoming the container where fence could be revealed. Because when we started, we didn't have the money. But when we finished, we did. This is just like, I think, every other demonstration in our life. Because what's happening when we're preparing, uh, when we're speaking our word in prayer, we're preparing ourselves. We're preparing our consciousness so that we can become a place where God's greater good is revealed. So it's not that God needed two years. We did. All right, I did. It took two years to reconcile my faith. Right? Now, there's no time in God. We teach that. You know, time, time is a construct of the mind. That's an Einstein thing. We all get that. Time is not real, blah, blah, blah. Past and future and present, they're all happening at once. Yada, yada, yada. I get it. I get it. I get it. God didn't need time. And it wasn't like God was withholding. That was the time it took for me to build my faith, to reconcile my faith, so that we could be a place where that would happen easily and it wouldn't interrupt anything else that we were trying to do. So in Science of Mind, we say we have a demonstration when the thing we are treating for is achieved. Whether it's health or peace of mind or a healing of a relationship or offense, whatever it is. You know, the universe has no judgment on what you're seeking to express in a greater way. 
And so the first um, Wednesday night, this, was, this is how long ago this was. I used to actually do the Wednesday night services. This was in the days before Reverend Mark. And I came early for the service, and uh, I was just walking around the property, and I got out to the front, and the uh, Sunday school teacher for, for, for the Wednesday night service had about 15 little kids sitting in a circle out on the lawn that was now fenced in and was teaching them a song. And I looked and I went, yes, this was it. That was the fruit of what we had been praying for for two years because now the yard was like an outdoor room and we could use it safely. You know, there, there, there was no problem with other things. It was a safe place to be. And so I see that this is what happens when we're seeking to demonstrate a greater good in our life. That we have to put in the time and the effort to pray and meditate and study and lift our thought and lift our thought and do it again and again and again. And it takes as long as it takes for us to get there, not for God to get there. Right? Because God's already said yes. You know, this is a universe. Uni means one. There's nothing working against us. So God has already said yes, but it takes time for us. You know, for me to heal my doubts, for me to surrender my fears, for me to let go of all the reasons why I think it can't happen again, you know, all that stuff, all of that stuff. And I think that plays into everything, every manifestation, every demonstration that we're seeking. So remember, a manifestation, it's a healing, right? A greater truth, a greater experience of God has come forth into our life to replace a lesser experience. You know, something in me is probably dissatisfied. That's why I want a greater good. Something in me is probably lacking. That's why I'm desirous of a greater good. And so know that as soon as you pray, God says yes. We believe that in the science of mind. The universe absolutely says yes as soon as you start to pray. The problem is that we also have some other thoughts going on that this is going to be hard, and this is going to take time, and I don't know if I deserve it, and where's the money going to come from, and who's going to want to do this, and on and on and on. Just speaking along these lines, I can't tell you how many times I think I have had great ideas, and I didn't do the praying, and I said, hey, everybody, this way, let's go, let's do this, and I start marching up the hill, and then I turn around and realize there's nobody behind me. That like absolutely nobody was on board. It was just me. And it's like, oh, that's why I have to take the time to do the praying and the meditating and cultivate the consciousness, you know, that becomes the container for the greater good. You know? So it, it is a prayer answered, but not in the sense that um, we've said the right words, you know, to something outside of ourselves. Our word has taken form. It has done something in our mind, and it has done something in the law of mind, the, the basic law of consciousness, which is responding as we think and speak and believe. Because life is lived from the inside out, and there is great depth to that life that is within each and every one of us. You know, it's our own consciousness that has to change. You know, something's got to change in here before anything can change out here. And so a woman I know... Um, had just had this major demonstration regarding finances. You know, she'd had this wonderful manifestation, a beautiful, beautiful healing. And something, and so when we were talking about that, I, I wanted her to really see, I said, do you see that something took place in your mind? That something changed in you? Hmm? And, and, and we had to talk about this for a while for her to really understand because, you know, all of the work we do, every time we pray, every time we meditate, every time we affirm, every time we visualize, every time we chant, we're changing consciousness a little, a little, a little, a little. And then at some point, the scale tips in our favor. Right? Now, that's because it just took us that much time to become that place where a greater good could be revealed. You know, that which we seek Ernest teaches us, has to have a subjective mold in us. And then it could be objectified. So to go back to my story about the fence, what we were doing for those two years is we were creating a subjective mold within ourselves so that the natural outpicturing of that was fence. Not just fence. Fence paid for in full before we did it, right? So this is like saying, you know, I have to become that place that can hold the good more... Uh, hold more good than I have right now, and also be the avenue that lets that good out into the world. 
See, I think we try to understand things in the framework of our human experience. I thought this, so I got that. Um, I think that's an oversimplification. Spiritual things have to be spiritually discerned. You know, that it's never just one thought that does it. You know, it's, it's a cultivated consciousness. It takes time to build and expand consciousness. Many years ago, I, I was very young. I was just uh, out of college, and I had um, gone over to Founders Church downtown. Dr. Hornaday was the minister then at that time. He was a terrific minister. Uh, and I said to him one day, I said, Dr. Hornaday, I'm interested in becoming a minister. What can you tell me about that? And he said, are you in a hurry, young man? <laughs> and I said, no, no, I'm not in a hurry. He had this big, booming voice that was very imposing. And I said, no, no, I'm not in a hurry. You know, back then, I was like 20-something. I had plenty of time then. Uh, <laughs> and I said, no, no, I'm not in a hurry. He says, good, good, because you can't build consciousness overnight. No, 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 you can't build consciousness overnight. It takes time to build consciousness. You know, and I walked on there, okay, thanks, okay. And I thought, what was he talking? And, and now I really understand. Now I really understand that it took time, because it did take time for me to do that, that journey. Um, we hear about supply and demand, you know, in business all the time, you know. And it's the same in God's business. You know, God has supplied all, though. God is infinite. We make the demand by creating the consciousness within ourselves. See, that's how we make the, by creating the consciousness within ourselves for a greater good to be expressed, for a better condition than, exis, than has existed before to be able to come forward. You know, it's like saying, I have to become the kind of person who can live a better life. I have to become the kind of consciousness that can have a better experience. I have to become the kind of consciousness that can have a healed body or an abundant bank account or whatever it is. I have to become that kind of person who can have loving relationships or meaningful work or sufficient supply. I think of the story of a great musician who was playing uh, a command performance for royalty. And following the performance, this, this duchess came up to him and said, Maestro, you are a genius. And his response was, ah, yes, but before I was a genius, I was a clod. <laughs> you know? what's, that, what, what's that mean? He said, well, he, he, he started out not a genius. He had to do the work again and again and again and again to get to that place, right? In other words, you know, the moment of genius is the result of years and years of discipline and overcoming and practice. Those of you who are in the entertainment industry, you know, people love to tell stories about someone who was an overnight success. But most of the time, when you investigate somebody who's an overnight success, you find out that they spent years and years and years of getting to that place of overnight success. You know, that they were doing summer stock in podunk. I'm sorry if you're from podunk and you're listening. But they did summer stock in podunk for eons before they had that big, big, you know, thing that, they are so, that we think, oh, that was your overnight success. So how do I become that? Through definite mental work. Ernest Holmes talks about being definite with the infinite. I do definite mental work on my own consciousness. And what I mean by that is that I do it regularly. You know, I pray every day, I meditate every day, I affirm every day. I do this work every day, followed by whatever action I'm given to take in the world. So the work for us, I think, first of all, is to do affirmative prayer or treatment, yeah? To believe that it is already done. You know, because it says in the Bible, before I ask, they will, I, you will answer. Um, to see in our mind's eye a greater good. To use this imagination. Our imagination can be a wonderful spiritual tool to move us forward, you know, and to not negate or doubt. Mm -hmm. We must all along, we must know all along that God has already said yes, and that if there is any resistance, that resistance is in us. So if there's something to be surrendered, it's my unbelief. If there's something to be surrendered, it's my, um, my doubt, my fear. You know, that's, that's what I'm, I'm surrendering. My surrender is not a giving up. I'm giving over my unbelief. So God has no need for us to be without. God is infinite, lavish in its givingness to all of us alike. So lack is not part of God's consciousness. We have a loving God that's always waiting for us to get with the program. You know, just sort of very patiently. And I realize it is a patient waiting for us to get with the program uh, because I was slow to get with the program. You know? and, and, and I think, well, 
God was really patient with me, therefore I should be really patient with other people. Uh, and we talked about that last week, so I'm working on that. Um, so when I say that you know, the resistance is within us, I mean that we can't go beyond our ability to mentally embody an idea. If you think it can't happen, or you think it's going to take a long time, it will. But that's just how your belief and my belief is outpictured. Right? When, when I say the resistance is within us, I mean we can't go beyond our ability to embody that idea. So I think there are, it's like there are three sides to, to the triangle, right? Uh, three areas of influence of mentally embodying an idea. There is um, our experience in the world so far. Everything we've lived through, right, so far. Well, I know what I know and no one's going to tell me different, right? We all have some of that. And then there's what the world around us believes. So that thinking that's, that's out there in the race consciousness, the collective unconsciousness. That's powerful when a lot of people really agree on an idea that this, you know, but, but often that agreement is, well, this is just the way things are, or this is the way things have to be. And I think that's resignation, really. You know, well, I know someone who had this experience and it was so bad for them, you know. All right, so that's, that's the second side of the triangle. And I would say the third is what we are convinced the spiritual truth is, right? What's so about God here is also so about me. So a greater good in life, uh, experiencing more of, of the harmony and the joy and the love that God is, does not depend on our environment. It does not depend on condition or location or education or background or personality or opportunity. It doesn't expand, it depend on any of that. What does it depend on? It depends on our belief and our ability to accept, to receive. You know, I believe that we are all supposed to learn to be gracious receivers in the universe because God is trying to give to us all the time, you know? So to pray to a God out there, out there somewhere, and wish for greater good can only be expressed as much as we believe that God is willing to help us. But God is willing to help us because God has given us the law, spiritual law, the law of consciousness, which gives us the exact objective experience for which we have built a mental likeness. Does this make sense? Okay, so God says, I love you so much, I'm going to give you this law to build your own mental likeness. I'm going to give you this law to work with to create life the way you see fit. So we build in mind, we build an idea, a concept in mind, and release what appears in our subjective mind to negate. That would be our doubts, our fears, the story of the past, right? If science of mind is about practicing the presence of God, and I believe it is, when we become still and meditate, we can know, like Ernest Holmes says in the textbook, the divine plan for me is perfect. I love that. I find that a very comforting idea, to know that the divine plan for me, for you, for every individual is absolutely perfect. I'm held in the mind of God as a complete and perfect expression of life and truth. And so that plan for every one of us is perfect. We are held in the mind as complete we are held in the divine mind as complete and perfect expressions of life and truth. I really do. I love that. And no power can hinder us or mar us, mar this inner image of reality, for it's God-given and God-kept. So it, it is time to take a new look, I think, at ourselves and contemplate the divinity within, which is another way of saying our God potential. Right? We don't have to wait for our good. Imagine that, that we don't have to wait. So all the areas in our life where we say, oh, this is going to be you know, three months or six months or a year or two years, we don't have to wait for our good. It is, in fact, at hand and ready to spring forth to express itself in our lives as soon as we're on board with that, as soon as we accept, as soon as we believe, as soon as we don't resist. Our job is to provide the avenue. You know, We clean out the closets of our mind and our life. In the greatest sense, this is not about making stuff happen. This is about allowing a manifestation of spiritual truth, of spiritual reality, to just naturally be born in our life by means of us. You know, if we've been waiting for an angel to announce that things are going to change for us, that they're going to get better, that we're going to heal, that our 40 years of wandering in the desert like Moses and the children of Israel, you know, is coming to an end, well, that messenger is the spirit of God within us. That angel is God, the voice of God within. And experience 
in our own consciousness is what's going to guide us. It's not going to come from something outside, I believe. That we are divine, we are of God, no matter what we have thought of ourselves. And that can change. If you have not thought good of yourself, I would encourage you to let that go and start to think better of yourself. Starting when? Any time between now and right now is a really good time to get with this program, right? Start thinking better of yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and experience, um, what am I trying to say? We are the offspring of the divine, right? If we've been wandering in the desert, and I know I have, I have been, have you seen that commercial where the guy takes off his shoe and he just keeps pouring out sand? I've felt like that, you know? Just, just that, like I've been wandering in the desert for years and years and years. That, that if we've been wandering in the desert, it's time to come home. Yeah, we've been wandering with obstacles or problems, maybe lack or loneliness, and we have to just come home to who we really are because it's always, always been there, just waiting for us to call it forward, to demonstrate it into expression. You know, this life is for living and growing and unfolding and expressing, for experiencing a deeper awareness of what we call the isness of God. Anything we ever want, science of mind teaches us you already have. Anything we will ever be, it also says we already are. Because the greatness of God exists within each and every one of us. So I think the most important thing is not what happens to us, but what happens in us. Right? So I know for all of us that we have the consciousness of that which we seek. Whatever it is. Remember, God has no judgment. The universe is saying yes. So our demonstration brings greater good. We have the capacity to know. We are the avenue. All that is taking place is a revealing of the reality of God that's in us right now. So, I will recap quickly. It takes time to change consciousness. So we have to be consistent and be patient with that. Every spiritual mind treatment you do, every time you sit with a practitioner, every affirmation, every time you meditate, every time you visualize your greater good, it is working. You have to know that, okay, it hasn't shown up out here yet, but what's happening is I'm being changed in a deep way on the inside. I'm being made into that container that can hold the greater good. I think about what Jesus does in the Bible where he says, he says, thank you, Father, I know that you hear me always. Right? So he's giving thanks in advance before receiving. I think that's very powerful. You know, to, before I have the healing, to be thankful for it, to be grateful for it, right? And, and continue to surrender my unbelief, continue to surrender my, um, my resistance, continue to surrender my, oh, this is the way it's always been, and say, but God says yes. And that yes that God says is greater than anything I've experienced so far. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment to recognize that right here, the fullness, the allness of God, God's infinite loving intelligent spirit is right here. And it is the truth about each and every one of us. We are made in the image and likeness of God. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High. And in this awareness, I speak the word for each and every one of us that we are open, willing vessels to express God's greater good. And so I know whatever it is in our heart that we are seeking to demonstrate, whether it's a physical healing or a healing of relationship, the, the, a demonstration of supply or a demonstration of our right and perfect work or home, I know that the universe, God, says yes. And so all of the work we do when we pray and meditate and affirm is to build our consciousness so that we might become a place where the natural outpicturing of our consciousness is that greater demonstration. I know that this is how it works for each and every one of us. That God, the universe, is always saying yes. And we are gracious receivers. We do the work diligently, consistently, and only good comes from it. So we include in our prayer our family members and friends and loved ones. We know that right where they are, God is. Surrounding them, filling them, loving them up. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world around us. So all those things that pull at our attention, we say God is right there even in the midst of that because God is the power. God is the presence. God is the activity. And God is greater than all that appears. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. 
We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I know that we're blessed by being together, that there is raising up, that we get to be healed. And we have the faith for that. And so with a full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth. I know it's already done, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen.